Can I drink this or is this? Sure, you can drink it. You can do whatever you want. It's your show. It's true. Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I have a treat for uh, us today. I have a treat for us today. Only rarely are we able to have authorities in the tiki scene come in and really talk about what's going on in this space that we inhabit, especially in cocktails. We've had some bartenders. We have never had an authority on rum before. And I, I don't know anything about rum. I know the rums that I'm supposed to use for different cocktails. And it's so important to use those rums that are prescribed per cocktail because there's such a different flavor profile. For the first time ever on the show, I would like to welcome one of the foremost authorities on rum, the founder of the Ministry of Rum and the owner and ambassador of Hamilton Rums, Mr. Ed Hamilton. I don't think the breezeway is tall enough for you. Sure. Ed, thank you so much for joining me on the hey, show. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. Um, Good to see oh, you. Good yeah. to see you. The first time that Ed and I met was at the Blind Rabbit in, uh, what was that, Anaheim? Anaheim. Anaheim. And we're sitting next to each other and we didn't know each other at all. And I was, we were talking about rums and stuff, and I was like, oh, I, yeah, I know about rums. Uh, he knows about rums. And I was like, yeah, I love Zaya for like a good daiquiri. And he was like, uh, yeah, you don't have to add sugar to that. <laughs> and I was like, where's this guy? You spent years sailing around where? All over the Caribbean, Eastern Caribbean. His knowledge of rums is so authentic. So you've been to, well, you've been to all of the rum islands. Right. Yeah, all the rum on this. I've been to almost every distillery that imports rum to the U.S. today. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot. There's a couple of them I haven't been to. And I spent 20 years on a sailboat, and I was fortunate enough uh, to meet a lot of interesting people, and I was served a lot of interesting drinks. Yeah. But, like you, I'm not a bartender. Yeah. I play one on the internet. Yeah. In the West Indies, yep. a West Indies rum punch. Mm -hmm. One a sour, two a sweet, three a strong, four a weak. Add some spice and make it nice. <laughs> and when every little kid knows that, because they don't have the nursery rhymes that we grew up, this little piggy and all that crap. Wait, that's the nursery rhymes they have? Oh, yeah. And the, where, where is this? Grenada, St. Lucia, Antigua. They have rum rhymes. Yeah, rum rhymes, yeah. Hmm. But in the French islands, the French do things a little differently. Okay. This is Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Bart's. Oh, okay. Uh, Saint, north side of St. Martin. Uh -huh. But the French, being French, they have to do it differently. So they have a simple little drink called a petite punch, okay. a little punch. Okay. It's only three ingredients, sweet, sour, and strong. Okay. Now, I started importing this in uh, 2005 when the big craze was mojitos and this kind of drink, you know, muddling stuff. And mm -hmm. I said to bartenders, I'm going to show you a drink that you don't have to muddle, mm -hmm. you don't have to shake, and you don't have to strain it. And this is in 1995? 97, 98. Okay. But I started importing this rum in 2005. Okay. And at that point, mojitos were a big deal. Uh -huh. And the bartenders were dying with muddled hands and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I said, well, here's a real simple drink. And for this cocktail, we will be using limes, sugar syrup, and 100 proof white rum agricole made from sugarcane juice in Martinique at a family owned distillery. So what are we doing? We're, we're taking a slice off the lime. Just a, just a piece off the side of the lime. Okay. Watch and, the, uh, careful, just, that is a shockingly sharp knife. I'm really happy about that because trying to cut a lime with a dull knife really stinks. This, this thing. Yeah, it's pretty good. So what, you're just doing a little squeeze in there, just huh? Just a little bit of lime. So we all know a daiquiri, quite a bit of lime, quite a bit of sugar and rum. Yep. A caipirinha, well, that's a lot of sugar. A lot of lime, start with a lot of lime, and then a lot of sugar mm -hmm. to basically cover the cachaça. This is just a little bit of sugar, a little bit of lime to complement the rum, not to cover it up. Ooh. Just just add, get a little, add a little bit of flavor to it. This is a very appropriate cocktail for a guy who is such a fan of rums, right? Yeah, well, it's something, something simple. Yeah. So stick your finger out there. Uh, just stick your finger out there. Now look at that. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, So this that's is, incredible sugar syrup. This is not simple syrup. Okay. This is 72% sugar made with raw sugar from Martinique at a sugar mill in Martinique. Yeah, I import this because I couldn't get it in the US. Oh, okay. And you have to have it. You have to have a good syrup. Yeah. Now this one, I got a little more sugar than I should have, but do you like drinks sweet? 
I like drinks. Okay, a measure of rum. A measure. So we're not we're not gonna use this thing at all, right? Well, I know about where it should be on the line. Here. Okay, so and the so, idea here is I'm not gonna sink the ship. If I go above the gunnels in the ship, I'm gonna sink it. So for the people at home, about an ounce and a half. About an ounce and a half of rum, tiny little piece of uh, lime that you just kind of slice off the side of a lime. Oh. You don't want a wedge. Okay. If you use a wedge, it's gonna get bitter. Because this is hundred proof. It's gonna leach the, it's a solvent. It's gonna leach the bitterness out of the lime. Okay. And so we're looking for mostly the pith. Okay. And, and then this super fancy sugar syrup. Well, it's about not, how much of that? Uh, Half ounce? Julie at uh, Flatiron measured it one day to be a quarter of a bar spoon. Half an ounce, don't don't get into ounces. A little bit. Oh. Just enough to cover the lime. Mm, just cover the lime. And then what's this thing? This is called a Lily. And this is a naturally grown swizzle stick from Martinique. Grows on a tree in each what? one of these nodes. So back here there was another one and it grew five branches. So it's a geometric progression. Like a, that's a That's plant. a naturally grown wooden stick. Look at this creation. And so you just kind of swizzle it in there. Swizzle it around. Okay. The, the sugar cane syrup dissolves almost instantly. Yeah. Now you watched me do that. Yeah. I'm really good at being tall. You sure are. <laughs> but I'm not a magician. Hmm. That's a hundred proof cocktail. So have a little sip of that and, we'll add, and then we'll add some ice to it. Okay, so just a little a little sip, huh? Yeah, just have a little sip of that. Okay. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. Now throw a little bit of ice in there. It's, a, it's got a little bit of fire to it. It's um. It's 100 proof. It's, and it's your first drink of the day. <laughs> it's like, it gets you, like here. How much ice? Just uh, just uh, half of that. Half of that? Yeah, Let me yeah know. keep going. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's good. So just kind of enough ice to kind of yeah, cover it, cover it, but not start filling it up. Yeah, something like that. Like that? Yeah. Now do you do the, now, the plant thing again? No, you can. Sure, we can do that. Okay, now take another sip of that. Okay, are we gonna cheers again or is? Sure, okay. cheers. <laughs> Salute. Thanks. So that completely changed. Oh, wow. A little bit of ice, it starts to blossom. Oh. Now this is probably politically correct back here in the good old US of A, but What's there's that? a lot of politically incorrect things going on these days. Uh huh. In Martinique, they say adding a little bit of ice and letting it melt, mm -hmm. it blossoms. Mm. Okay. Like a young girl on the beach. It's a beautiful thing. Add a little bit of ice to it. As the ice melts, it blossoms and it changes. Now take another sip, it'll change even more. Mm. Oh, wow. So this is my first drink of the day. Okay. People say, what do you drink? I drink a tea punch and then I'll have something else. Oh, okay. So my first drink of the day is a tea punch. Right. Simple, easy to make, 100 proof cocktail. It took me four or five months to learn how to make this properly. I made the usually immature mistakes. I used a wedge of lime. I used too much lime. Oh. I put in too much sugar. Maybe I put in too much sugar and then I thought I would fix it by putting in more rum. Mm. Forget it, start over. Any good bartender will tell you when you're making a drink and mm -hmm. you don't get it right the mm -hmm. first time, set it aside <laughs> for your buddies. Yeah. But start over. Okay. Don't try to fix the drink. It rarely works. And when did you first have one of these cocktails? 1989. 89, probably on a boat in... Actually, it was on a dock. Uh, race had just come over from France uh, and a bunch of people came over, route to Brum race, and they landed in Martinique. I happened to be there and uh, the rum companies all had their tents and they had beautiful women serving drinks and uh, they wanted to practice English and here, have a drink, sure, I'll, here, have another. And then I understood that this was not like any white rum I'd ever drunk before. Right. The next day I knew it wasn't any white rum that I'd drunk before. Oh, what do and you I mean by that? I learned that, you know, keep it down to two. Oh. <laughs> you don't need more than two of these. Yeah. It is 100 proof. Yeah. And I said about an ounce and a half. Uh-huh. If we were working with an 80 proof spirit, mm -hmm. then we use two ounces, mm -hmm. that'd be equivalent to about 1.6 ounces mm -hmm. at 100 proof. So we go with an ounce and a half, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you need another drink, go make yourself another drink. Yeah. But it's a great drink to start the day. <clears throat> and, and in Martinique, they start the day with this. Really? Well, I feel like day. I'd be a, a, a drinking day, five o'clock. Oh, okay. Not breakfast. Yeah. No. I was like, if I started the day with this, I'd be asleep by noon. No. I'd be like, oh. But uh, Ed told me to start the day with this. Yeah, Ed told me. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's it really does change oh, with yeah. every every sip. And see, I'm not gonna bull. I know what I know what you've been told about me, but I'm not gonna bull. We have always talked about how water changes the flavor, and, and it's part of the flavor of tiki cocktails too. And I, this is a is this a tiki cocktail? No, it's just a it's from a the cocktail, island. It's a drink. It's a, a it's true a tea punch, a petite punch. Yeah. The difference too is that most tiki cocktails were kind of born in Hollywood. Yeah. Or o Oakland. Or, or Oakland. Yeah. Right. And uh, and this is like a true island cocktail. This is an island cocktail. Now the reality is. Everybody in the islands, when they started making rum, mm -hmm. they were making it from sugar molasses process. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, they weren't growing sugar cane and crushing it and fermenting it and making alcohol. Right. They were making sugar. When they made the rum, it was pretty crappy, uh -huh. but they had sugar, so they added sugar to it. And they, oh, that was a little sweet. Mm -hmm. Well, let's put some lime in there. So every island, every drink, every place they made uh, rum, they started with lime, sugar, and alcohol. You, know, you use what you got. Your palate for rum and knowing where it's appropriate is pretty uncanny. Uh, what would you use for a daiquiri? Me, personally? Yeah, because you, you told me that the Zaya was, was improv, although it's very sugary, it's very tasty. Well, I just I think of that as an introductory rum. People try it. Right. And uh, on the Ministry of Rum website forums, Years ago, many people came on and said, oh, I just discovered Zaya, I love it. Yeah. Six months later, they go, wow, that stuff's sweet. Right. Well, it's well, really that... good over ice cream and all kinds of stuff. Ice cream. But it introduced them to rum, and then they looked at what other rums are there. Totally. What else is there that isn't so sweet? Yeah. Well, when I was, I remember when I first had my first rum drink ever, it was like Captain Morgan's and it was spiced and tasted good at that time in college right. or right. high school or whatever. Right. Once you start diving into it, then you start really appreciating pot, like dark pot still rums and one well, You probably liked candy more when you were five or six years old than you do now. Don't, I don't eat a whole lot of candy now. Yeah. I don't eat candy. Or candy wrappers or candy wrapper flavored rum. It's just not in my diet. So what would you use in a daiquiri? Oh. Is it the white stash? Well, the white stash was developed for daiquiris. Ooh. But uh, myself, when I'm making them at home, yeah. I use a little bit different, I use a couple of different rums. I put in some gold and I a trick that I learned from a bartender in New York, I put in a little bit of orange liqueur. Oh. Mix it delightful daiquiri. Okay. Uh, but I also use a lot of the uh, West Indies 1670 blend. Uh -huh. It's a blend of Jamaican and Guyana rum, uh, Demerara rum. Those two are 84 proof together. Uh -huh. uh, that's, Is that this one? Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay, West yeah. Indies. West Indies 1670. You have such particular names on some of your bottles and I, I own a lot of them and I, I go, I have no idea what to do with this thing. Well, I'm really lucky I get to make up all the names. So 1670 <laughs> yeah. is the year that both Worthy Park Estate in Jamaica mm -hmm. and Demerara Distillers trace their heritage back to. Oh, okay. It's not aged 1,670 years. <laughs> it's a very old rum. So that one uh, evolved out of a rum called New York Blend. Mm -hmm. People came to me and said, we want a daiquiri rum. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, all I've got with me too, what do you want for a daiquiri rum? Daiquiri's a big word. <laughs> it's a big word. It's what a, do you want? Yeah. And that day, all I had was a bottle of Navy String. I had some of this stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. Navy String. Here we go. 114 proof rum. Uh-huh. So I don't argue with bartenders. Yeah. These guys, three big Irish guys. Mm -hmm. I said, here, make a daiquiri with this and let's talk about what you want to do here. Whether you want to go up or down, lighter, or heavier, what mm -hmm. you want. Here, let's let's have a drink. Sure. So they made three two ounce daiquiris with this stuff. Mm -hmm. And the people I was talking to said, hey, yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. I said, no, it's not. You guys are professional Irish alcoholics. <laughs> I would suggest that you don't serve 114 proof two ounce daiquiris to little old ladies that come down to the pier and want to have a daiquiri with their fish and chips. Yeah, you'll knock them out. What you really want is those ladies to have one and say, damn, that was delicious. I want 17 I more. I think I'll have another one. Right. And another one for my friend. She, yeah. No, she doesn't drink right now, but it's okay. So we finally got it down to 84 proof. Uh -huh. But as you can imagine, I'm not the guru of marketing, mm. but New York Blend didn't sell for <laughs> in Boston. <laughs> 
other places, they said, eh, you know, what else you got? I said, well, I got a West Indies blend. Oh, so you changed the name. Changed the name, but the product remained the same. You're about ready for another drink, aren't you? What do you want to have? Oh, are we gonna make something else? Well, we're not gonna do this show with one drink, are we? I didn't come all the way down here for one drink. Oh my God, this is the first time. Well, you asked to talk about a daiquiri. Yeah. Now, I'm not a bartender. I don't play one on the internet, but. Yeah, but you know drinks. What is happening right now? All of a sudden we're doing another cocktail. Watch the, he was yeah. bunking his head on the lights in here. Well, yeah, I know. Well, it's all built for my height here. So I don't, okay. I don't, I don't usually it's expect okay. a six foot, what, 11? No, six five. So I'll let you do this. Squeeze this. <laughs> okay. One well. of my frustrations is reading cocktail books that talk about take the juice of one lime. Oh man! Well, Vic was famous for doing that. Juice of one lime. Juice of one lime. But I think it was supposed to be for his bartenders because it was like shorthand for an ounce of, of lime yeah, juice, right? Yeah. Okay. But the problem is every lime is different. Sh absolutely. And. These are pretty good limes here. Yeah. So what I do is throw this back in there and squeeze the two of them together. And I get 10% more juice. Like, just throw it on top. Really? We get more oils out of it. Uh huh. But bartenders can crucify me and I don't really care because I'm not a bartender. Yeah, I've heard that if you over squeeze, ooh. Well, you, well, you get 10% more juice. All right. But we're not going to be overly juiced here anyway. Yeah. What is this? What is it? So. Daiquiri's one to four, right? Yeah. So we got 20, 20 milliliters of juice. Okay, well, let me turn well, this around. Well, that's enough for my drink. You wanna squeeze another one for yours? 20 Oops. milliliters, okay. 20 milliliters, so that's the lime juice. If we do twice that, we got 40 milliliters of rum. That's a little over an ounce, ounce oh. and a third. If you want to get into the nuances of juice squeezing, you know the Trader Vic's, those those guys did the uh, the sideways squeezing. I don't know if it makes any difference or... I, I haven't studied that closely. <laughs> but, but you do have books on, on the subject, right? Uh, books not on... lime squeezing. I have books on other things. <laughs> not lime squeezing. Things, things that matter to me. Yeah. Don't confuse me with somebody who really gives a about how you squeeze your lime. We're looking at... Uh... This thing kind of lights you up real quick. Yeah, that's why I like it. It's good. It's a good yeah. little drink. Good starting drink. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're approximately 36 milliliters of juice. Okay. So if we're going to double that with rum, mm -hmm. or just multiply that by three, we're yeah. at 108 milliliters. Okay. And so we're going to fill this with alcohol, rum, mm -hmm. up to 108 milliliters. A New York bartender one time showed me putting a little bit of orange uh, liqueur in a cocktail in a daiquiri really added another little dimension to it. So it'll just add a little bit. Now, what I like about this is it really doesn't matter how much I put in. Okay. I just put in a little bit. Yeah, and what is this? This is uh, orange liqueur, shrub. Oh, a petite shrub. Petite shrub, shrub, no vinegar. And then I throw in a little bit of gold. Okay. Just a little bit. Jamaican high still gold. gold. Yeah. So here's the beauty of this. So, mm -hmm. so we added a couple of rums. We don't have to measure them. Yeah. And then we just go up to 108 milliliters. Doesn't matter if we go over, but yeah, 109. 109 milliliters of rum. Can you show the bottle real quick? Sure. The label? So <laughs> episodes ago, I was making a cocktail with one of my pinup models and I was like, yeah, this is the the Hamilton White Stash. And I was like, look at, look at the bottle. And she's like, there's a mustache on there. What's up with a mustache? Well, I was gonna call it Lazarette Stash. Do you know what a Lazarette is? Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't call it Lazarette Stash. Mm -hmm. All right. And if I called it White Stash, S-T-A-S-H, people would think I'm some kind of drug runner, which I'm not. Right, but you did tell me a story about running rum. I ran rum. I, ran, I smuggled everything you can smuggle in the islands except drugs. Ooh. Because everybody I knew that smuggled drugs ended up in jail. He was a sailor, a, a rum runner sailor. Yeah. It's pretty rad. I'm working on these scars here. I went to my dermatologist today to get scars implanted in my face. <laughs> implanted. So back to this cocktail. So we're at okay. 108 milliliters. Okay, wait, let me move the white stash up. And away. we were at 36. So this is, normally you would use half as much sweetener. 
Right. 36, 18. Okay. But we're gonna do about 10 because this is not simple syrup. Okay. So there's about 10 milliliters. Okay. Is this how you make all your drinks in this like uh, chemistry thing? Yeah, it kind of works for me. It might not work for everybody, but I highly recommend it if you're looking to get precise. Yeah, well, better drinks. Okay. So uh, throw that in there. You want to throw some ice in there? Yeah. So is it better to use uh, solid ice or crushed ice for a daiquiri? Well, I like small cubes. Uh, crushed okay. ice tends to melt faster. It tends to be softer. Yeah. Uh, but cubes, we'll give it a quick shake. I've been shaking this a little bit. Okay. Um, I'll let you strain and pour. So you don't want too much water into these drinks, No, right? not too much. Okay. And the other thing about the uh, graduated cylinder is sometimes I'll strain it back into the graduated cylinder just to get an idea of how much dilution I'm, you, I'm getting. Oh, wow. Uh, just, you know, to kind of... See, there's such precision with this dude and his white mustache. You want to improve on your cocktails. Yeah. And so if you pour it back in here and then you know how much dilution you've had, and then you make you pour your drinks and then taste them and go, oh, well, I think I need more dilution. Well, how much dilution do you have? I have no idea. Yeah, of course. Gee, That's... let's ask Astro. He might know. <laughs> My dog? He doesn't know, he's a dog. I got this glass at Kelly Merrill's wedding. You know Kelly Merrill? I do. From Trader Sam's? I do. <laughs> he's a character. All right, cheers. I got this glass from Kelly Merrill's wedding. Like, you stole it from his wedding. He yeah. wasn't handing these out as souvenirs at the wedding. All their glassware was all like mishmashed, like vintage glassware. And he's like, take some of these home. And I was like, you bet your ass I will. I picked mine up at uh, secondhand stores in Florida. Everybody moves to Florida with their grandmothers. Her mm -hmm. grandmothers moved to Florida and the mm -hmm. kids don't want their glassware. So it ends up in the secondhand store. Yeah, totally. Charity store, and so I buy it and ship it to uh, wherever I am. And, this is incredible. This is really good. Well, all I want you to say, Spike, is it doesn't suck. That's all that matters. This doesn't suck. There you go. Yeah. So the white stash was actually developed for daiquiris. Bartenders are coming to me saying, we need a white rum for daiquiris. Right. I said, man, there's always a cheaper white rum. I've been criticized for saying it's a whore's market. So I won't <laughs> say that. No, we won't. I'll say that. No, don't say it's a whore's market. It's not Call them a whore. You don't want to insult the whores, do it. <laughs> God. Like some Norm McDonald <laughs> there. I said to bartenders, okay, pull all your white rums off the shelf and let's have a taste. What do you like about all these different things? Yeah. And they said, well, you know, we don't like them. There's a bite in the finish or there's right. something wrong in the aroma. Uh, what they don't the, have any flavor. What were the white rums that they were, that they were looking at? All Sorry. the usual suspects. Okay. And I went around the country and we tasted virtually every white rum. And I said, okay, what are you really looking for? And they said, well, white rum with some character. Mm -hmm. We don't know what that requires, but we want some rum flavor mm -hmm. and we want something with a pleasing aroma, no bite in the finish, mm -hmm. and something we can pour in a bar with volume at 50 cents an ounce. Okay. Which translates to about $17 a liter wholesale. Okay. Now, don't send me an email telling me you local retailer charge you more because you're not a bar and you're not buying cases. You're not. So forget about it. But uh, that was the goal. Mm -hmm. And I knew what that would require is a three-year-old or so mm -hmm. aged white rum. If you go more than three years, you're kidding yourself because you've got to carbon filter it to make it clear. Okay. I could age it three years and then it'd be a gold rum but people wanted white rum with their dad. A good white rum is three years old. Okay. And then to meet the price point, I blended in some fresh distillate made from sugarcane juice. So it doesn't have the bite that you normally get from molasses, mm -hmm. which is the problem when you need to age it. Mm -hmm. I was able to put it together. I had to buy a bunch of it and hope to work, but it did. And uh, away we go. It's only available in liters uh -huh. because 750 milliliters of this is just not enough. Mm -hmm. You need a liter. Yeah, it's an incredible rum. I love it for my light rums. This daiquiri is like the smoothest daiquiri I've, I, I think I've ever had. Don't call me a bartender, we'll be friends. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm glad you like the daiquiri. <laughs> what is your favorite tiki drink? Uh, I have a few. Uh, Jeff Berry makes a thing called a Hamilton float, Hamilton dry float. I oh, really, really like that a lot. Oh, is it like a Mai Kai Demerara dry float kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right. Demerara dry float, I like that a lot. 
Uh, the other thing that I really like, and I wouldn't call it a tiki drink, uh, but I do one part uh, pimento dram, three parts 86, and then fill the glass with orange juice. What's that? It's called an orange blossom because my lovely assistant said, Ed, you got to have a name for this drink. You can't just go around telling people this thing. I'm not a uh, mixologist or even a cocktologist. You ever, you ever hear the, the term cocksmith? Yes, I have. <laughs> You know Macbeth? <laughs> Cocksmith. It's a very unfortunate name, but it it's effective. Yeah, it's effective. Okay, so what, what are we doing now? So I'm going to show you a drink. I did this in Vegas a few years ago, and I said, okay, I'm going to do two drinks. Tea punch. Yeah. Everybody loves a tea punch. Yeah, Once yeah. Once they have a good tea punch. For the other drink, I'm going to make something so simple you can make it at home. Okay. You're going to love it. Okay. Start out with a little bit of pimento dram. What, what is this? Just you just like flagrantly dripping stuff into the, in the uh, glass. Oh my god! This. I'm gonna show you a drink that's easy to make. I'm talking easy, man. I'm not. But so like how how many ounces is that? Oh. For, for the people at home, the meticulous ones. Okay, let's call that three quarters of an ounce. Okay, three quarters of an ounce. Now three times that. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be two and a quarter ounces of Hamilton. 86. Okay. But this is something you can make at home and you don't even have to measure it. It's mm. so good, you, it's simple. And then you fill the glass with fresh squeezed orange juice. How many ounces is that? You tell me. <laughs> Wait, that's the drink? That's a drink. You just, what about ice and straining and shaking? And... Oh, drink some and then put some ice in it. Have a drink. Mm. There's seeds in this. It's fresh squeezed orange juice. <laughs> what do you call this thing? Orange blossom. That's incredible. It doesn't suck. Yeah, it doesn't, that's all that doesn't matter. suck. That's yeah. all that matters, right? That's all yeah. that matters. So wow, you have, you so have any good. ice left? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't strain all the seeds out of the uh, seedless <laughs> orange juice. <laughs> You're you're breaking all of the rules of tiki cocktails of like meticulous. There are rules in tiki cocktails. Yeah, measuring, squeezing fresh stuff. What is this? What I like is a well-made drink, a well-balanced drink. Yeah. But I've been doing this for a while, and I did about three to one this to that. Yeah. And then filled it with orange juice. I think too many people get hung up in the fact that oh my god, I gotta have this, and. Oh, my eyes are going bad. <laughs> but what happens when you have to do like an, an eighth an ounce of Pernod or like a quarter ounce of I go Dram? to a bar. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, do, you do think that there is like a reason for like the micro amount. Sure, but I don't have all those ingredients at home. Yeah. No, but, I got a bunch of rum and I, I got an orange tree and uh, a squeeze of oranges. I think the best thing in the world is having fruit trees in your backyard. We're so blessed to be in Southern California. We are. And maybe Florida, if you're in Florida, except for hurricanes. Yeah. And the humidity. Yeah. <laughs> and mosquitoes. The bottom line is, you just want something that doesn't suck and it's easy to make. Yeah. Totally. No, it, that is not a tiki drink, is it? Is it? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. It's not in a ceramic a... tiki mug. <laughs> but my goal in this was, bartenders came to me and said, we need a pimento dram. Right. I said, okay, well, what do you want? And they said, anything better than St. Elizabeth. Mm. You, I know you can do this better. Yeah. And the reality was Eric Seed was a good friend of mine years ago. We used to share hotel rooms because we were traveling around the country and sharing distributors. We didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. Go here and there. And he, he came back with this stuff called St. Elizabeth All Spiced Ram. Mm -hmm. And he poured some of it in my tea punch and I almost punched him. And punched I, him over almost, the punch. I said, Eric, you know, don't do this. This is horrible. Don't ever do that again or I will punch you. But I said, what the hell is this? Yeah, he goes, you oh, know, it's all spiced ram. And I said, no, it's not. Oh. What he did was call his buddies in uh, Austria and say, hey, it's simple. It's Jamaican rum, all spice, and sugar. Yeah. Austrians know how to make everything. Yeah, sure. So they made their product. So what I was looking for is something that's simple. So I went to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And I found one that I really liked in the grocery store. And I went to the guy that was making it. And I said, okay, can you make a container of this stuff? And he said, man, you got any idea how much work that is? I can't do that. Right. And you're like, and I do thought, that. 
Dude, you just saved me a lot of money. Thank you very, very much. Oh. What? He didn't have the resources to buy enough allspice and rum and scale it up. and bottles and scale it up. Right. And he just would have made a mess of it. Right. And then the second batch probably would have been completely different than the first batch. Right. And you want to be consistent. I want to be consistent. So yeah. what I did was I got some samples from Worthy Park that I have a relationship with mm -hmm. of their light rum. And then I took it to upstate New York where I do all my bottling. I had them put together Jamaican allspice, sugar, and the light rum. Oh. And then I sent it to a few friends of mine, like Jeff Berry, and I'm not gonna name drop all these people that don't wanna be talked about. I think Jeff Berry's probably enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're into tiki cocktails, Beach Bum Berry. Beach Bum Berry. Is the guy that laid I'm the- I'm very fortunate that he's a friend. Yeah, laid the brickwork for all of us. Right. It took me two and a half years. So it's, it's like a daiquiri. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to make a good daiquiri? It's not easy. <laughs> It took me two and a half years to blend Jamaican rum, yeah. allspice, and sugar. Mm -hmm. Three ingredients. Mm -hmm. But based on my experience that I knew it took me four or five months to make a tea punch, right? I said, okay, this is gonna be a journey. Yeah. But then when it finally when I finally got it, I said, okay, this is it. I'm happy with it. Uh -huh. And then what do you do with it? Well, I use it in chicken marinades, I use it. Really? Over apple pie. Oh, it's great over apple pie. Oh my pie. God. It's great over a lot of things. But I served my mother some of it in a class. She was out visiting. Yeah. And uh, I said, I came back with another class and I said, oh, I got orange juice and the 86 and this. She goes, no, I just, I just want some of the more of that pimento dram. It's great. I go, no, no, it's got a lot of sugar in it. You're going to be up all night. Yeah. Have a little bit more rum and a little bit of orange juice. And so we have what we have here. Today. And what, what do you call this? Orange blossom. <laughs> Pretty I've, simple little I've drink. asked you that like three times now. I'm... It's okay. This drink is so easy to make. Why don't you try one? Just throw some pimento dram from, we got a little more orange juice. Okay, there. wait, I but I'm so used to measuring. I'm like a, the measuring guy. How much? Pour some. Pour some? Okay, now, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> Whatever you want to pour. Now pour three times that amount. About three times, it doesn't matter. Three times that amount, okay. Release yourself. <sighs> no, what? No, I don't want to release myself. I, we're trying to be specific here. There you go, well, that's probably more than three times, but it's okay. What? It's okay. <laughs> Spike, it's gonna be okay. Cork, people love corks on the show. I do too. One of the challenges when I went to the leader bottle for several of my rums, yeah. I had to find a bottle that the goddamn cork fit. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And the, capsule, it easy. and the capsule had to fit. Oh. Because when you buy capsules, you got to buy 25,000 at a time. Oh my God. And? You don't want to screw that up. Everybody thinks this is easy. It ain't easy. But okay, so what's... what's fill this? it up with orange juice. Just fill up the glass. That's true. All right. Like that? That's about perfect. I think you're, I think you're a winner. I think you could be a cocksmith. <laughs> Make Biff, we did it! Oh my god. Uh, so try that. Okay. I think, um. Okay, wait. You knew this wasn't gonna be easy, didn't you? Well, I didn't think that I was gonna get super drunk on this episode. Drunk? I only had two drinks. Yeah, only two drinks. Doesn't suck, does it? Doesn't suck. No, it's super good. Yeah, doesn't suck. Any more suck. ice in there? Yeah. So, what's your favorite tiki bar? Can I ask you that, or is that a? Uh, are you gonna get like disowned by, by people that you sell to? No, uh, <laughs> we're in Southern California. You know, I love Trader Sam's. Mm -hmm. I do too. It's not pretentious. It's yep. under the radar. Yep. An amazing thing about that is all those bartenders put their heart and soul into every cocktail. They do. And I read the menu and I go, you're not really pouring this crap, are you? <laughs> and they look at me and go, Ed, whatever you want off the menu. I know. And then, yeah, I've gotten to know most of them. Mm -hmm. Probably all of them for the years. Yeah. And they tell me that 50% of the drinks are off the menu. Yeah. It's a destination. People come in and they go, yeah, we don't want this on the menu. What else you got? Mm -hmm. But the other thing that makes a good tiki bar, and Mike, I certainly 
fits this bill. Yeah. Is you gotta have good food. The food's great. And it's good. I know. It's good. I've been very fortunate to know Dave and Mike I and mm -hmm. almost all the people that run on Tiki Bars these days. I can't go to Florida without going to Mike I, even though my, my mother lives in uh, Bradenton and uh, that's where I grew up. So I'll drive across the state to go to the Mai Tai. <laughs> you know, it's, I know. it's part of the deal. It's part of the deal. No, it, and it is the iconic surviving tiki bar. Yeah. If you ever have a chance to go to Dave's office, it's amazing. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah. The whole place is amazing. Yeah. The bathrooms are amazing. The everything, bathrooms are incredible. Everything's amazing. I know. The thought and everything that went into that, um, I really feel bad all the county regulations, they had problems with their roof and this and that, you know. There are many or several others that I love. Bootlegger in Palm Springs. Yeah. Have you been to Bootlegger? Uh, uh, years ago I went there. Well, they've upped their game. The music was uh, dodgy at best when I was there, but the cocktails were incredible. No, they're, they're, they're up in their game. Mm -hmm. I think it was the Palm Springs Don the Beachcomber was located where Bootlegger is in that building. Well, yeah, well, so it's a coffee shop and a right, yeah. drink but you, spot. Yeah, but you can still see like the, the torches outside. Right, yeah. right. But there's there's a number of them. There's one in Bakersfield, mm -hmm. uh, Tiki Co. Oh, right. It's amazing. I've been really lucky to be introduced to a lot of these people and I really appreciate all their passion. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I could travel and go do more of it, but you know, you know how, <laughs> how things are in this age. Uh, but you know we're we're getting out. Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's coming back mm -hmm. uh, quickly. Yep. And I'm seeing increased sales. It strikes me as I go from 750 bottles to oh. liter bottles. Okay. And during the pandemic, it went from liters to 750s. Oh. Now I'm seeing people are ordering more liters. Okay. And I go, oh, okay, tiki bars are opening. Yeah. They're buying liters. So Spike, thank you very much for uh, your time. Folks, thank you so much for joining us back here on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour for a show that had three cocktails? No, I wasn't counting that. Yeah, count. whatever. But with the uh, the incredible Ed Hamilton of uh, Hamilton Rum, I hope that you'll come back because no, there... No, 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 no more. There were I had too much fun. I'm not coming back. <laughs> there are stories that we were telling before the cameras were on about his how he got into the whole rum thing, all kinds of things. So hopefully we'll have Ed back soon. And uh, thank you once again. You. Cheers and aloha. Hey, as long as the cocktails don't suck, I'll be back. Yeah. Buy Ed Hamilton rums. They're really good. <laughs> aloha. Where'd you go? He just walked away. All right. Yes, we'll this is the most bizarre cocktail hour. It's it's all out of control, but it's so delicious. No, it's not out of control. You haven't seen out of control. Yeah, you have. <laughs> well, yeah, I probably have. In the rum world, are you getting your head in the shot? What the hell do you want to be called? Ed Hamilton. Well, I'm, yeah. Hold on one second. Let me just make sure that your head is spitting in the, in the, the shot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to foreshadow that one on you. Do you like this one better? <laughs> no. And there was one dude. I can come back and we record a, a buddy cop film. <laughs> See? Drunk. So, at all, what we have in the Caribbean, which is this. <laughs> but I think Trader Sam's is underrated. Um, you know, it's Disney. <laughs> dog. I totally agree with you about the Disney thing. <laughs> hey! Stuff. You got some uh, orange in your mustache oh, and your yeah. white stash. Yeah. And every, as everybody knows, every once in a while you need to shut me up anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> gonna waste it on the Ed Hamilton show.